Good morning, ladies, and happy Friday. Heather Petherick here, success coach for business leaders and entrepreneurs around the globe. Thank you for joining our Facebook Live Friday. I am so excited. I've got some amazing stuff to share with you today, ladies. Um, but first, as you are piling on, um, welcome. If this is your first Facebook Live Friday with me, um, make sure you post your name and where you're joining from in the comments below so that I can warmly welcome you. Um, if you are a loyal fan that tunes into our Facebook Lives, uh, give us a shout out and um, yeah, let us know where you're from as well. So today, I want to get right to it. I have some amazing things to share with you. I was hosting a live event yesterday um, for 30 of the most stylish and um, yeah, 30 of the most stylish business women yesterday um, in our city where I was sharing with them um, some really interesting information about what I have learned as a success coach for business leaders and entrepreneurs over the last decade. And even though you couldn't be there, I wanted to make sure I shared with you some of that same insider information to help you on your journey to success. So that's what we're talking about today. It is the five sneaky habits that are killing your success, whether you are an entrepreneur growing your own business or whether you are a, a corporate rising star, these habits are universal. I shared yesterday with my audience that what is personal is universal. And so I know this applies to every woman who is big thinking, ambitious, heart-centered and really wants to make an impact. So listen up. Um, I've got a little bit. I just want to make sure our technology is working. So ladies, as you are here live, if you can hear me and our internet is like being our friend today and it's not choppy, give me, uh, give me a comment so I can make sure that things are all working well. Awesome. Looking for those comments. Okay. Um, as you are doing that, you'll see today I'm in my sporty spice outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I'm a little jazzed, a little more jazzed up for Facebook Lives, um, but today's a bit of a, a day of rest and restoration uh, for me after um, having been really focused on delivering a great event yesterday. So hope you're appreciating the Sporty Spice tank top today. Anyway, so I'm going to get right into it. I'm, okay ladies, I'm not seeing any comments, so I'm afraid the internet looks a little choppy from my side. How does it look from your side? Let me know in the comments. Cool. I'm waiting. Okay. Uh, okay. So first, before I get into those five sneaky habits that are likely killing your success as a woman business leader, I want to ask you this. Does this resonate? Do you ever feel like you know where you want to go? You know where you want to go in your career or your business? And you're constantly looking out into the world and you're thinking, okay, it's not where I want to be just yet. What do I need to do? Maybe I need to take another online course. Maybe I need to implement a new business tactic or strategy, or maybe I need to go and get more education, or maybe before I can get that promotion or grow my business like I want to, I need to get a certain type of experience, right? There's all these things that we place in front of ourselves out on the horizon that we tend to shape up as excuses or reasons why we're not good enough to have the success that we know at some level, at some level is already possible for us, but we're still not getting it. Hey, Jackie, you're here. Awesome. Jackie, um, thanks for making that comment. Let me know how is our audio and our internet connection today? I just want to be um, aware of that. So help me out with that lady. And thanks for being here, Jackie. Um, so getting back to what I was saying, I want to know if this relates to you. Do you often think to yourself, you know, geez, um, I'm not getting the promotion because I don't have this type of experience or my business isn't growing at the pace I want. Maybe I need some different marketing strategies. Jackie says, it's all good. Sweet. Thank you very much. You're my tech champion today. Um, you know, maybe it's, and there's plenty of people in our, in our network, whether it's friends or colleagues or clients that are more than happy to give us ample suggestions of what we should be doing to improve, grow, and expand, right? Maybe they say, hey, you need to be on Facebook Live, and you need to like become the expert in that realm, or you know, maybe you need to um, grow your business and, and bring in team members so you can learn how to delegate and lead others. Maybe that's the next piece. Or maybe 
you know, we'd love to promote you, but you think that you need to have an MBA before you, you're qualified for stepping into that. There's all of these things, whether it's in our business or in the corporate world, that we put out in front of us um, that we think we need to get before we can step into the success that we really want. Anybody resonate with that? Give me a hell's yeah, thumbs up, hearts, whatever. Let me know if that resonates with you. But here's the thing, that while there's a big difference between, and this is what I shared yesterday with my audience, there is a huge, thanks ladies for the thumbs up, awesome. There is a huge difference between tactics, right? Business plan, marketing plan, sales strategies, whatever it is, the tactics, and having the tension for change. So here's what I mean. We can know intellectually as a woman in business what we should be doing to get more clients, grow our business, get the promotion, whatever success is for us. We can intellectually know what we should be doing to achieve that. But there is a huge gap between intellectually knowing and being the woman who can execute on that. You know, so often I see clients and, and women in business who are, so are so scattered. They're jumping from, you know, one, one silver bullet idea to the next, or they keep explaining their lack of success or lack of progress because it's tactics. Connie says, yes. Robin says, yes, absolutely. Love it. Um, um, you made me lose my spot. Uh, wait a second. It's coming back to me. All right. Um, we can, we can distract ourselves thinking that it's all these things out there on the horizon that, that we need to strive towards and achieve or, or, um, possess so that we can have the success that's in our vision. When that is just a distraction, what I have found, what I have found after a decade of coaching women, and I started out as focusing in career transition and helping women leverage their talents and find their ideal career path. And then over time, more and more of those clients returned for coaching, but at a whole nother level. Now it was about, you know, stepping out of corporate and stepping into their own business, or if they were rising stars and wanted to stay within corporate, it was making the leap to key leadership positions. So they were coming back again and again for coaching at a whole new level. And this is what I have found. This is what I want to share with you is that my clients breakthrough success always comes down to a very small list of core issues. I'm gonna say that again, that a woman's breakthrough success always comes down to making very specific shifts in her mindset, her emotion, her, her person, the way she shows up, very subtle but significant shifts in the mindset, the personal, the personal place, and in, in the, did I say emotion? Those minor shifts, which relate to certain core issues. And I'm going to, do you want to know what those are? Do you want to know what those are? The five core issues, or as I say, the five sneaky habits that block your success. A little bit of dramatic pause here for you as I'm waiting for you to type with enthusiasm. Yes, Heather, we want to know. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. So here they are, ladies. Listen up. After 10 years of coaching women in a variety of industries, in a variety of levels, right? Right from Fortune 500 company leaders to, you know, you and the dog building your, your legacy entrepreneurial business, right? The whole gamut. This is what I have found. There are five core issues that can block a woman's success. And it's not tactics, business strategies, or a business plan. That's not what it is. It's what's underneath that. And here they are. They are, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Tell me, tell me. I love your enthusiasm. Thank you for being here. Here they are. Number one, and these are in no order, like they're just the five. And depending on who you are and how you're wired and what your personal experience is, you may get hung up on one or two of these more than the others. So here are the five. One is procrastination, right? Avoiding the tough work. Number two is perfectionism. Being paralyzed, thinking you can't take any action unless it's perfect. Um, people pleasing. And, and as I'm reaming these off, ladies, uh, give me a hell's yeah if you're like, this is me. Um, so what did I say? Perfectionism, uh, procrastination, people pleasing, number three. Another one is, and I've got this written down because I know I get off track. <laughs> I love the hearts. I love it. I love it. Uh, here they are. Um, okay. 
self-doubt or fear, right? Letting that fear paralyze you, thinking you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, thin enough, young enough, old enough, whatever, thinking you're not enough. And number five, and this is a sneaky one, it is the habit we have as women to apologize for who we are and what we want, right? And this looks like saying, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, or, you know, I don't mean to be a bother, or if it's not too much trouble, or diminishing the fact that maybe we want a promotion or we want to expand our business, and, you know, kind of couching it in these terms of like, I think, I hope, I wish, being tentative, ah, makes me pull my hair out, um, only because I used to be in that camp as well. Um, so those are the five. I'm going to say them again. And thank you, ladies, for the hearts and reactions. I'm loving it. Um, people pleasing, perfectionism, procrastination, the self doubt, I'm not good enough idea, and the needing to apologize for who you are and what you want. Now, as I have recited those five sneaky habits that are killing your success, I would like to know right now this is a private forum, this is a safe place, ladies. What is it, which one of those or two is your core issue? What is the one that seems to be plaguing you? And often, once we name it and claim it, that's when transformation starts to happen. It's when we're operating with the blinders on and we're not even seeing ourselves that we just keep repeating frustration and disappointment and, oh crap, it didn't happen again. So I would love to know, ladies, please let me support you if you resonate with any one of those five or multiples, um, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to continue though. So now when you look at that list, it is a very, it's a very concise list of what can be holding you back as a woman in business. Again, whether you're in corporate or whether you're building your own business as an entrepreneur, these plague every woman. What is personal is universal. But here's the good news. It's not that you need to like, oh, Connie's, okay, great. Uh, Jackie says, perfectionism and self-doubt, ding. Uh, Connie, yes to self-doubt and the apologizing. Playing small is another great way to say it, absolutely. Uh, Danielle, procrastination, self-doubt, yeah, baby. Robin, perfectionism and self-doubt, yeah, right? What is personal is universal. And here we are thinking, oh my God, it's just me. I'm the only one that's inadequate or feels not good enough or that has trouble, you know, getting ourselves to do the tough work. But ladies, no, it is every woman. I don't care how successful you are. The women you admire the most, doesn't matter how high they get in business, career, you know, finances, they too are experiencing this issue, these issues, and have to evolve, evolve around and above them, they have to evolve through them to get ever increasing levels of success. So it's not that, you know, if you're a procrastinator that, oh my God, you know, it's the end of, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a life sentence for failure. No, that's not, that it, that's not it. Although sometimes we interpret it as that. It is to look at, this is my habit. This is the sneaky thing, how I keep self-sabotaging my success and start to focus in that area, start to evolve beyond it. And once you do, boom, amazing starts to happen. It's not about getting more education or getting the latest marketing technique or getting different team members in some cases, right? Those are all distractions and, and masks for the real issue, the core issue that's going on inside of us. Because remember, the world is just a mirror of who we are and how, you know, what we think of ourselves. Have you ever heard that? Give me a, give me a wave if that um, is a familiar phrase that you've heard before, right? The world and the people around us simply mirror how we feel about ourselves. So if we think that we are internally not good enough, if that's the, the language we use on ourselves or the belief that's underneath it all, then what happens? We hire people that aren't good enough. We get passed over for the promotion no matter how hard we work. Or people in our personal lives continue to let us down because they're mirroring that we don't think we deserve better. Oh, amazing, amazing stuff. Love psychology. Um, yeah, so thumbs up. Thanks for that. Um, so a lot of these issues, and, and it gets even better. I feel like I'm a little bit rambling, so hang on with me. It gets even better. 
When you start really getting to the core of these issues of people pleasing, perfectionism, procrastination, they are really all different sides of what I would call like a Rubik's cube, right? Six sides to a Rubik's cube. They are all different faces to that and, and even even more core issue of of worthiness, of, of having confidence in yourself, of knowing you have everything you need right now to achieve what you want. So a little bit of focus in this area can create huge, huge gains. Instead of killing ourselves out on the periphery of our lives, thinking it's more technical knowledge, better business tactics, the latest you know, marketing plan, whatever it is, those are all distractions for the real work that is going on inside. Um, would love to know your thoughts and comments on what I have shared so far, the five sneaky habits that are killing your success as a woman in business. Yeah, thank you for the hearts. Okay, I'm going back to my little plan here to make sure that I did not miss anything. Um, so one of the things I promised is what you can do about it. The first step is awareness. And many of you ladies, Connie, Jackie, Danny, Robin, you know, right? We are smart women. We know once we label it, we know where our area of weakness or where our nemesis is, which one of these seems to trip us up. So that's the first step, gold star. Second step is to really start focusing in that area, start to untangle, unravel, and begin to see where did this thinking, where did this pattern begin? And oftentimes, Yes, it was as children, right? When our DNA, when our blueprint for behavior was laid down, that's where these habits were formed. Robin says, I feel that striving can sometimes get conflated with self doubt, excuse me. Absolutely, sometimes you want success so you can feel good enough, right? Okay, thank you for saying that. A fantastic point. Sometimes we think when we get the promotion, when we get the MBA, when we start earning more money, then we'll have the confidence, right? Then life will be fantastic. But we've got it ass backwards. We actually have to clear out the clutter, straighten out those core issues first, and then very gracefully, almost effortlessly in comparison, we start to attract and develop the success we have been craving, striving, and killing ourselves for all these years. So it's switching the flip and reversing the focus, not on getting, you know, getting the success, the paycheck, the vacation home, you know, that outward success first, and then we'll be healed. It's going to the core first. And from there, great things happen. Uh, Chloe, you're here as well. Uh, she says, I need to learn to get away from people pleasing while still providing excellent customer service and foster strong relationships. Yeah. Um, that brings up hold on, the little light bulbs are going off in my head, Chloe, because of your comment. Thank you for that. Um, people pleasing, there is, um, and we've talked about it on previous Facebook lives a little bit. Um, it's a phrase called codependency, um, which sounds like really dark and bad and wrong. Um, there are many versions of codependency. And I think what you're describing, Chloe, is, you know, kind of a, a bit of the lighter version, um, where you are seeking approval, you're putting your confidence or worth in the react or in the reaction of others, um, which is uh, a major sneaky habit that as you are up leveling in your business and your life and you're needing to delegate more, um, treating your your colleagues and even your direct reports, um, putting your self worth in their reaction, ooh. That can really um, be a, a wicked form of self-sabotage. So thank you for offering that, Chloe. Thank you for being candid because I know a lot of us can relate to that. Um, people pleasing, aka a form of codependency where we put our self-worth in the hands of others and their reaction and opinion. Oh, juicy, juicy, juicy. So thanks for sharing that. Um, okay, so I told you the five sneaky habits. You've got those, right? We've talked about what that can look like. Um, and thanks to Robin and Chloe for providing those great examples. I love you ladies. Uh, yes, yeah, so hard. Thanks, Heather. <laughs> um, what else do I want to share with you? Ooh, I feel like I'm, I feel like I, I've either had too much coffee or not enough today. Um, 
Okay, so here's the thing. I do want to provide you a solution. Um, I want to provide you tangible ways that you can begin to unravel this. And here's the thing. I love Facebook Live because it allows me to connect with you, but I'm going to be honest, ladies. These types of core issues is not something that can be solved with a, you know, a three-step process in a 30-minute Facebook Live. I'm going to be honest. Maybe you want that. I'm sorry. It's not a realistic solution. But it is a solution to work with a qualified master coach. Sorry, that's my quirky sounds of humor. Um, a master coach who has spent the last decade of helping women unhook, unravel, and get clear of these sneaky habits. Perfectionism, people pleasing, procrastination, the self doubt, self sabotage, not good enough piece, and the apologizing for who you are. So, if that is of interest to you, I know, ladies, that you know. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. I thought you might appreciate that. Um, you and I share the same, same sense of wacky sense of humor. Um, oh, Debbie, you're here. There's such a thing as too much coffee, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so I do, you know, all joking aside, I want to be realistic, ladies, that a 30-minute Facebook Live is not going to solve um, these patterns, these habits, these core issues that have been operating for 28, 30, 40, 50 years in your life. This takes real one-to-one -one support with a proven mentor and master coach that has worked with ladies around the globe doing this very thing. Um, so if that is of interest to you, if you know you are ready for a breakthrough, you are ready to flip the switch and go from you know, being scattered and, and frenzied, looking for the next, you know, silver bullet solution to your career and business and are ready to really go to the core and become an empowered feminine leader that does not put her value in the hands of other people that can speak directly, but lovingly, that's neither bitchy, you know, a bull in a china shop, nor the, the wilting flower that's afraid to um, cause a ripple. If you are ready to be that empowered feminine leader and really create the kind of success that you have been striving for. And let's be honest that you know you are meant for, then let's do the work and let's move forward together. I do have openings right now to work with me privately. Um, the only way to work with me privately, ladies, is in a six month private coaching program right now. I have a small number of seats available right now to work with me. So if you are curious about exploring what that would look like, what it would take, then reach out to me privately. You can private message me here through Facebook. Let me know you're interested and we'll have a private conversation about what that looks like. We'll talk, I'll get to know more about you, your goals, what of these five habits you see is really sabotaging and diminishing your success. And we'll talk about what it would look like to create a six month strategy to really unhook and evolve beyond them once and for all. Sound good? Sweet. Okay, ladies, that is what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I've got some time left over. Look at that. We are like 30 minutes almost to the dot. We got three minutes left for questions or comments. So Debbie, Robin, Chloe, uh, Danny, if you're still here, Connie, Jackie, lovely ladies, let me know what you thought of this. What is this bringing up for you in terms of aha moments, questions, curiosity, reaction? This is the interactive part where you get to ask me your questions and I am a open door for you while you're typing your questions. I'm going back to my notes. <laughs> Right, so we've been talking about the five sneaky habits that are universal and that diminish and make our success a lot more difficult than it needs to be. People pleasing, procrastination, perfectionism, self-doubt, I'm not good enough. Or number five is the apologizing for who we are and what we truly want, playing small. Um, I want you to know I am usually live. For those of you who are new, um, I'm usually live Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, we sprinkle in expert spotlight interviews on those days. So you can, uh, I'm bringing you a carefully curated list of other experts, um, other business women, and some past clients to share their experience with you on some of our Facebook lives. Um, and also giving you the best of what I've got to support your journey as a woman in business, whether that's in corporate or whether you are an entrepreneur. So 
Uh, Jackie, I've been told that success doesn't require perfection, but it's hard to live that truth. Wow, I love that comment, that success doesn't require perfection, and it's hard to live that truth. I would absolutely agree. Um, and I was, um, you know, I have love for that because I've come to the other side. I was a flag-waving, proud perfectionist for probably the first, I'm going to say 35, 35 years of my life, um, and got to a point where it was so exhausting. It, it, it was just unrealistic. It was unsustainable and, and had to learn the hard way that it wasn't about being perfect. It was about failing faster and, and falling in love with failing. In fact, instead of seeing failure as this wrong thing that I, I had to avoid at all cost, it's actually falling in love with failing and using failures and missteps as a sign that I was moving forward. So a real powerful reframe. Yes, it is tough to live with when, as I said, you've been living with that programming for, you know, 35, 45 years. Um, Danny says, I know I learned the habit of self-doubt, perfectionism, and procrastination from my mom. I know, right? We love our moms. Um, and they were doing the best that they could with what they had. Um, so this isn't about, you know, parent bashing at all, but we need to learn where it comes from and rewrite that story. Um, you also say, love her to death, but I know they have come from my childhood. Doing pretty good with self-perfectionism, but I know the procrastination is huge. Yeah. Interesting thing here, Danny, that may, you make me think of is that um, perfectionism and procrastination are two sides of the same coin. Mwahaha. Think of it that way. They are actually both behaviors or symptoms of the same type of thinking. Yeah. That's fun. Uh, Debbie says, I missed most of this, but we'll rewatch. Awesome. Currently working with a mentor, but sure like your style. Awesome. Thank you for sharing your gift. I love it. Thank you for being here, Debbie. Jackie, oh my goodness. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, my sporty spice today. Normally I have like, you know, I'm accessorized and a little more coiffed, although I did fuss and put on some lipstick for you today. So there you go. Uh, sporty spice coming to you live. Um, <laughs> And yeah, ladies, it's 931. Um, it is my policy to respect your time. So I'm not going to drone on for a lot longer. Thank you for being here. Thanks for jumping in, being in our community as we continue to up level and evolve as business leaders and entrepreneurs. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your comments, your contribution and your engagement. You are the reason all of this is so awesome. So thank you. Uh, bring your friends, colleagues and uh, like-minded sisters. Thanks for the reaction, ladies. So. Those five sneaky habits, again, people pleasing, perfectionism, procrastination, the self-doubt, I'm not good enough thinking, and the apologizing for who you are. Ah, we got to get over that. So if you'd like support with that, you know where you can reach out to me to have a no obligation conversation about what that would look like to transform and evolve over the next six months. Thanks, ladies, for being here. If you're watching the replay, do write your comments and questions below. I always come back and check that feed throughout the day to support you even more. Thank you so much, ladies. Have a fantastic Friday. Mwah. Love you all. Have a great day.